Hi everybody, welcome to part two on how to safely and scientifically kill a European wasp nest just using materials from your local supermarket, specifically dog flea treatment and cat food. That's what we're going to be using to attract and kill our wasps. In the previous video, I gave you some details around some myths around how not to deal with wasps and what processes do and don't work and some good scientific literature research there and some links to that research so that you can read it for yourself. In one of those documents uh, from the previous video, there was some, inf some information there from Wine Tasmania on how to build a wasp baiting station. And we'll go through that today. And also some easy alternatives. What I'll also do is give you some detail around the timing, when we need to kill the wasps, and the process around which to do that. So the first thing we should really talk about is timing because there's no point killing wasps when you first see them come into your garden or come to your barbecue. What we need to do is dose up the, the, the wasp nest with enough poison to kill it effectively. And we're talking about quite large numbers of wasps here. I mentioned around 3,000 wasps in a nest. And that's quite typical at the height of summer. So what we want to do is use that fact against the wasps. So the timing in the southern hemisphere is around January and in the northern hemisphere around July. That's when the wasps are at sufficient numbers and they're growing and building and feeding the larvae in their nests. That's the time when they're coming out to look for a protein source to feed their larvae. And that's when we can use that against them and to kill them. So that's when we want to be doing it, not necessarily at the start of summer, but if the wasp numbers are too low, we won't get enough poison into them to kill them. You can still try, of course, but what we want to do is attract them and get them in one go. So let's talk about baiting stations. So the first thing is we want to have a safe place to put our poison but we don't poison the wasps straight away. The first thing we want to do is actually attract the wasps to our bait. And then when the wasps know where the bait is and tell the other wasps in the nest where to go, then we'll swap it out for our poisoned bait. So it's a two part process that's very important. We're going to lure and then we're going to kill them. Okay, so to do that we need a baiting station. Now in the previous video I talked about a wine Tasmania design for a baiting station and I've got the link there for it and I have built one myself. This is what it looks like. It's two tin cans. I've used a coat hanger, makes an easy hook and a piece of wire to join the cans together and in the base here is a place for the wasps to get in and out of and for our bait to go. This is designed to be nice and solid sit out on a, in a farm somewhere and to keep the bait nice and dry and give easy access to change the, the bait from a, a luring bait to a poisoned bait. Now this works fine, but I would say that's not the easiest thing for all of us to build at home. So I'm going to give you a couple of alternatives to that. You can still build one of these if this is what you want, but I think it's a little bit more complicated. So we'll, we'll look at some alternatives. So the first alternative is a really easy one. It's to actually use one of these fly trap, wasp traps. Now, I mentioned before, we're not trapping the wasps. We want the wasps to get in and out. This is basically the same as our other one. It's easy to hang up. It'll keep the bait dry. We can easily change the bait over. But what we don't want is for the wasps to come in through the holes and get stuck in here. We actually want them to come in and, and be lured to our bait, go back to the hive, tell more wasps to come in. So all we need to do is simply get a, a sharp knife and cut some holes in the side of one of these. And that will be perfect. If you can get your, hot, your hands on one of those, that's all you need to do. Just cut holes in the side and let the wasps in and out. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Because what we're going to be doing is, in a small saucer, we're going to be putting some of our cap food into the base there. I would just use the cap off a soft drink bottle, for example. That's all we need. Put the bait into that, the cap into that, put the lid on and hang it up in a tree with a nice big hole, a couple of big holes in the side, at least half an inch. So 12 millimetres minimum diameter for the holes to allow the wasps easy entry and exit. And we put that up in the tree and the wasps will come and find that and they will, uh, that, that, that's a perfectly good option for a trap. An alternative if you can't get hold of one of those is to use something like a yoghurt container. It's got a lid the bait can go in, easy access, keeps it dry. All we need to do is cut some holes to allow us to hang it up, and I'll just do that right now. Okay, so we're gonna make a European wasp baiting station out of a yogurt container. 
nothing very complicated. The first thing I want to do is to cut some holes on the side to let our wasps in. So just going to do one, two, cut that across. Okay, this is how easy it is at home, you can do this yourself. Okay, and we just repeat that on the other side. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's some holes for our wasps to come in. Now we just need some holes to hang it up. And I think the easiest way to do it is just to do a couple of little triangles at the top here. I'm just cutting a small triangle out. So it's a little triangle there. And we'll cut another one in the opposite side. One, two, and three. I'm trying to cut myself, of course, it is dangerous, so we need something to be careful. Three, okay. So that's that. What I'm going to use is the hanger I cut before for the um, for the tin can batting station. This is just a coat hanger with some edges bent over. As you can see, that will simply hook onto our, little, onto our holes. Very straightforward. In it goes. Just bend it into shape, make sure it fits. Just bend it in like that. And there, that's a wasp batting station. The bait can go in. The lid can go on and we put that in the tree and that will attract and help kill our wasps. So there's two, three easy options on how to make baiting stations. Uh, you can pick which one you, you find the easiest. I think the yoga container is pretty effective because the, uh, the holes are protected from the rain by the lip of the, uh, of the lid. So I think it's a really good one. Now we need to poison the wasps. Now there's a two part process to this. The first one is to lure the wasps to a bait. When the wasps are coming in sufficient numbers, we replace the bait with a poisoned bait, and then that will kill the nest. So it's quite straightforward, but it does take a little bit of time. Now, the Wine Tasmania Society gives some good instructions on this, and I've got the link below the video, and you can read about this in detail yourselves. So I'm not making this up again, it's all based on scientific research. But just to summarize what they said, what you do is you have your bait, in this case I've got a tin of cat food, which is a fish-based cat food, that this works quite effectively on wasps. This can go into your bathing station. It can go in as is, really. It doesn't necessarily need to be uh, taken out. Pop it in and put the lid back on and hang it up. Now, this needs to go out for about three days. In that time, go out and observe the wasps. And what you're looking for is at least 10 wasps visiting the bait the baiting station in a five minute period. Once you get that volume of wasps coming in, it's quite straightforward. Simply replace the bait with a poisoned one. At that point, you'll simply take the old bait out, probably throw it away because it might be very nice, and replace it with a new one. So let's go over the poison again. Now this is fipronil. The previous video we talked about the science behind why fipronil works, and there's also some literature there on the dosage of how much to use. So the dose to use is 0.1 grams per, uh, per litre. Uh, this stuff comes in 100 grams per litre, and for those who are scientifically based, that's a one in 1,000 dilution. In other words, if you put one milliliter into one litre of water, that would be a one in 1,000 dilution. So our cat food here is 85 grams. Now, you can translate grams into mils for water. So 85 grams is 85 mils of water. So if we want, we want one one thousandth of that, it would be 85 microliters of water. Now, what is a mic? What is what is it 85 or 100? It doesn't need to be that accurate. What is what does 100 microliters look like? Well, it's about one or two drops of poison. One two drops of your fipronil flea treatment mixed thoroughly. Put it back in your baiting station, put the lid back on, and kill the wasp nest. It really is that straightforward. It doesn't matter which of the methods that you use, but they're all perfectly effective. Up to you. This one's a nice easy one, as you can see, very neat and tidy. The wasps can get in and get out. They'll get to the meat, and it's very cheap and effective, just from the supermarket. 
So, good. Good luck on killing your European wasp nests.